everybody welcome back to my channel it's me Kendra and in this video today I will specifically be talking to nursing students those of you that will be enrolled into your clinical component this coming semester and the reason for that is because it is super important to have a good balance when you're in nursing school between the classroom and clinical because you can't pass the classroom portion and not pass clinical. They both go hand in hand. So my goal is to help you be successful in clinical and that is the reason for me making this video. I have been a clinical instructor for the past 10 years. I do have a master's of science in nursing education and I chose specifically to go into academia because I wanted to pay it forward and I also just being in nursing school, I had so many wonderful instructors and professors that I wanted to have the ability to have nursing students feel the way that I felt when I was enrolled in nursing school. I felt supported. I felt like my clinical instructors wanted me to succeed. And I know I hear a lot of horror stories about clinicals, which I do believe because I have also seen some myself as a nurse working on the floor, I usually get to observe students coming in on the unit to do their clinical rotations. I see a lot of interaction between them and their instructors and I'm just like, yikes. So I wanted to make this video to kind of serve as a resource and hopefully give you all some encouragement, some tips, guidelines, some advice on how to have a successful clinical rotation. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. I want for you to show up to clinical looking the part. I want you to come neat. I want for your hair to be neat, your uniforms to be neat. I need for you to be, be prepared. Get there a little bit early if you know that you need to drink coffee or you need to have breakfast before you start. Try to get to your clinical site a little bit early so that way you get all those things squared away. I don't want for you to be rushing in, flustered, oh my God, I'm late, I'm trying to find my instructor. Be sure that your instructor provides you with a very clear plan of where she wants for you all to be the beginning of the um, day. Like, do you want us to meet you in the main lobby? Do you want us to wait for you outside? Just establish those things with your instructor and arrive to clinical prepared. You need to look the part. Neat. If your scrubs are wrinkled, absolutely that's a no. Try to iron your clothes. Make sure your hair is neat, you, you're, you're clean, you look good, you look presentable. Please, 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 that is so important. And I know I keep stressing this, and I think I even talked about it in one of my earlier videos. And the reason for that is, as unfortunate as it is, presentation is everything. First impression makes a lasting impression. Since we're on the topic of showing up to clinical prepared and being a professional, please carry some resources with you. Now I know nowadays a lot of students are not carrying actual textbooks and a lot of your textbooks are on your laptops or on your iPad, so on and so forth. I don't wanna tell anyone to bring their electronics into the clinical setting because now we are talking about possible losing or having it, um, I don't wanna say stolen. So yeah, I don't wanna tell anyone to bring their valuables into the clinical setting, but you guys need to have some resources. When I say resources, I'm talking about a physical assessment book. For example, this one. I carry this one with me all throughout clinical, and guess what? It's usually in my work bag because I like to refresh. Even though I may know, I just like to confirm that this is this is actually it. This is the proper way to do the assessment or if I need to do this, I can double check for a quick reference, okay? So a physical assessment book, a drug book, maybe even a nurse and diagnosis book because your instructor will ask you questions that you will need to refer to resources. You need to go into these books to find the answer or to kind of double check, this is how I do a care plan. And if you don't have those resources available, I know a lot of you are saying things like, well, we can just get on the internet. Keep in mind, your instructor might not even want you to have your cell phones on you. Now that is not my policy as an instructor. I don't abide by that. But some instructors are like a no cell phone, no cell phone tolerance, no cell phone, keep your cell phones in your bag. I've heard clinical instructors say things like keep your cell phones in your car, don't even bring it in with you. To me, that's ridiculous, but it happens. The hospitals, yes, do have computers, but will you have internet access? Some hospitals are very shady with their internet access or with their internet connection like some buildings you might not even be able to get service or it's very slow service so you're thinking okay well I can just use my phone on my break or I can go to the computer at the nurse's station and probably look it up really quickly negative don't do not 
do not bank on it. Don't, that is not your guarantee. So usually in a clinical group of five or six people, I try to tell my students, one person brings a drug book, another person carries a physical assessment book, someone else brings a nurse and diagnosis book, and someone else might bring like a med surge reference book or something like that, okay? That is just my advice to you. Try to carry some resources into clinical. Do not go with just your two long hands, your stethoscope, your pen, and your pad, all right? You're going to need a little bit more than that. Moving right along. Number three, you are there to learn. You are there to make this experience the best experience. And don't get me wrong, you will encounter obstacles, but I don't want for you to make them a big deal. For example, in some hospital settings, you have nurses that are not student friendly. Is that your problem? Don't let it become your problem. That is their problem, because guess what? We were all students at one point, right? How else did you get here if you weren't a student? So I want for you to realize like this is your learning experience. You have a right to be there on the clinical site. Do not let anybody make you feel small or make you feel as if you don't belong there, okay? Now obviously you are gonna respect their space and respect their policies. For example, if you are in a patient's room and they ask you as a student to step out to give them privacy, go ahead and step out and give them privacy. But if you enter into a patient's room and the nurse is there doing a procedure, giving meds, watching or whatever the case is, you can say, hi, is it okay for me to look on? Okay. Especially if you're assigned to this patient, don't make yourself small. Like don't shy away. Don't act as if, oh my goodness, like I know I'm in clinical, but I don't want to be seen and I don't want to make them think that I'm trying to take over. No, 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 no. This is your learning experience. This is the time that's allotted for you to get as much clinical hands-on experience. So take advantage of the opportunity. Do not downplay yourself. You deserve to be there. The hospital wants you there because guess what? They're going to hope, they're hoping that you're going to apply to, to their institution, especially in these times, based on your experience. And what a lot of hospitals have realized is that if nursing students come into their setting and have a miserable experience, chances are they're not gonna wanna apply to that institution. So hospital administrations, they want for you to have a good experience, so just take advantage of it. Number four, as a nursing student, I said this on TikTok a few months ago, and that video, got so many views, so many comments. I was not expecting it, but hear me out. Okay. And this is one of the best pieces of advice you're going to get in this video. When you're in clinical and your instructor asks you a question that you're not sure of, don't say, I don't know. Wrong answer every single time. Never say, I don't know. Say to her, hmm, you know what? I didn't think of that. Do you mind if in post-conference I get back to you with, with that answer? I'm going to go ahead and find out. Or I didn't get a chance to look at that yet in the computer. Um, when we go back on the floor, I'm, that's the first thing I'm going to go check for. Or, oh, I wasn't sure about that. I tried asking the nurse, but she didn't know at the time. I'm going to go back and I'm going to follow up on that. Or I did ask the patient, however, the patient was in pain and I couldn't finish the assessment. So once the pain is taken care of, I am going to go back and finish assessing the patient. Never say, I don't know. Always tell your instructor something to the effect of like, I don't have it right now, but I will find out and I will get back to you. All right. Because that shows that you are making an effort to find the information out. It shows that you're interested in the patient's plan of care. Most clinical instructors do not like to hear, I don't know. Now, I am the kind of instructor where if you tell me, I don't know, and I'm like, you know, and you're going to find out. And I'll redirect you into where you need to go to find out. And I'll expect for you to follow back up with me. If you don't follow back up with me, oh, trust me, I'm following back up with you. Because I want for you to make the connection. Now, some instructors might be punitive. You say you don't know and they'll give you a bad grade for the day. All right? And I don't want for any of you to get a bad, day, a bad grade. So just go ahead and say, I'm not sure about that, but I will find out and get back to you. Perfectly reasonable. Okay. All right? I've lost count by now, but... Focus on your patient. Too often as an instructor, I have gone to students and said, what's going on with your patient? And they're like, I don't know. And I'm like, well, I just walked past your patient's room and your patient is not in the room. Oh, they're not? Yeah, they're not there. Where did they go? Oh, I don't know. 
so you don't know where your patient is. Just remember that as a nurse, you are responsible for your patient, okay? Anything happens to that patient, you're responsible. And let's just say you're practicing as a nurse and your patient is not in the room and you have no clue where your patient is and your patient eloped. That falls on you. You now have to do an incident report and document appropriately to protect yourself, okay? So I know that you're students and I know that it is a lot, but I want for you to really engage with your patients. Part of this is having conversation with the primary nurse and also engaging with your patients and double checking the computer every once in a while to see if your patients have anything scheduled for the day and possibly what time that the patient will be going for that test. Because what happened with that student was the patient actually went down for x-ray, but she didn't know the patient was going for x-ray. So just try to keep tabs on your patient, stay near their room, double check on them, ch check on them on a, on, a, on a regular basis. I was told as a nurse in training, an hour should not pass without me laying eyes on my patient. So a lot of students come out, come into the clinical setting and they go in and they introduce themselves to the patient and then they get out and then they get on the computer and they forget that there's a patient in the room. So I always try to encourage my students to keep in constant contact with your patient. It is okay to look up information on the computer, but that should never be your sole focus. I want for you to engage with your patient. You should know where your patient is at all times. At all times as a nurse, you need to know where your patient patients are, okay? Because if someone comes and says, hey, I walked into room 26 and he's not there, you can't just say, oh, well, I don't know where he is. You need to know where that patient is, okay? So a lot of times, nursing students, you all shy away from engaging with the patient. Engage, engage with your patient, spend time with the patient, double check your patient orders, you know, ask the patient, did the doctor mention anything to you yesterday about you going for any testing today? Because sometimes your patient knows what's going on more than the primary nurse who's taking care of them, okay? And there's a reason for that. I'll get into that in another video, but just focus on your patient because you're supposed to know where they're at and what's going on with them at all times. Something else I don't want for you all to do when you're in clinical, and I always point it out because nursing students always do it. And I'm gonna enact it here for you in a little bit, right? So you're a student, you're in the room and you're having a conversation with your patient. The physician walks in and this is what you guys do. You leave. Where are you going? Why did you leave the room? Unless the physician asks you for privacy with the patient, you have a right to be there. You need to listen in, okay? It can be the doctor or any other provider, the NP, the PA. Do not exit the room. You are the nursing student. You're part of the patient's plan of care. If you're in the room, the provider walks in, the therapist walks in, do not leave. You need to know what's going on with your patient. Why are they, why is that, why is that person coming into the room to talk with the patient? Pay attention, listen to the conversation. The reason for that is at that moment, the provider might give the patient what the plan of care is. Okay, Mr. Such and Such, your x-ray came back. It was negative. I think I'm going to discharge you home this, this afternoon. Do not leave. You have a right to be there. Not unless the provider asks you to step out because they want privacy should you leave out of the room. Or if the patient says, do you mind giving me and my doctor or me and my nurse practitioner time alone, then you excuse yourself, okay? Because also that's having respect and bedside manners. But other than that, you have a right to be there. Do not scurry out the room. Do not be afraid of the providers. They know you're a student. They know that you're learning and you deserve Thing I am going to discuss in this video. And I think I'm going to do some more follow-up videos on nursing students within the clinical setting because... There's a lot of things, even like when I was in nursing school, there were a lot of things that was never told to me to prepare for clinical. And I'm just like, well, how do y'all expect for students to know that if you guys are not telling them, right? So as a nursing student, your only job is not to give meds. And I think you guys are usually very excited. Oh, I wanna give meds, I wanna give meds. That is not the only reason why you were there. As nurses, we take care of the entire patient and we do so much. So as a nursing student, checking in on your patient, making sure that your patient has gone to the bathroom, making sure that your patient has fresh water at the bedside if they're not NPO, asking your patient, did you get washed up today? Do you need for me to help you? Um, would you like for me to bring you over your toothbrush and your basin so you can brush your teeth? Those are things that you as a nursing student should be doing. Your instructor should not be telling you Go do this, go do that, all right? Because you've learned some of this in fundamentals. That's why you're there. We don't only go to assess and give patients their medicine. We take care of the patients. For example, 
if I go in, when I go to introduce myself, if I notice that my patient's face is crusty, I go and I get a warm washcloth and I say, here, go ahead and wipe your face because you have some stuff on it. We pay attention to so many different things and there's so many different aspects of nursing. You're not just there to assess and give meds. That is not your only focus as a student. You're also there to engage with the patient, okay? You're there to make sure that their basic needs are met, including ADLs, all right? So just keep that in mind. Anyway, I'm gonna cut this video off right here. Leave me some comments. I always try to get back to you all in the comments. Let me know if you agree, disagree, if there's anything you want to clarify. Subscribe to my channel, like this video, and I will see you all again in the next video.